Today I've got a video where I'm going to show you how I set up and prepare one of my Thunderbee grenades as well as my thoughts. So if you're gonna if you're planning on picking up one of these Thunderbee grenades, you're curious or you already own one, um, there's gonna be a lot of good information here to, to share with you guys. So let's get into it. So first thing I want to start off with is just basic disassembly of the Thunderbee grenade so you guys can understand the components and basically what they do. So obviously we've got the shell here. This is a dumbbell configuration. And then in the background here, we have just the regular sound flash or cylinder um, configuration. There's a couple of other shells, but these are the two primary ones that I use. So just to open up the Thunderbee, super easy. You unscrew it, pull back the plastic shell. And this is a hard, really hard, thick plastic, by the way. You can put some BBs in there if your field allows. Check your regulations um, for the fields that you play at. So when you're purchasing the Thunder Bees, it'll say kind of one or two things, right? It'll say the core and then it's the shell. And so that's what these two things are referring to. So getting into the core now, uh, we have the shell aside. This is, you know, your main assembly. We've got the end cap here that just unscrews. And so from there, you can insert your CO2 cartridge, screw that back on and you're good to go. But I'm gonna continue to disassemble this. So this is the main cylinder tube, that just unscrews. And that is going to reveal your firing pin. So that's what that looks like there. And then if you continue screwing on unscrewing further, you can actually remove the firing pin assembly and so this is kind of how it works. What happens is this gets pushed up. When the hammer strikes, it strikes down. That pierces the CO2 and then boom goes your Thunderbee. This is a little metal washer here that just keeps this rubber all together. And this is an aluminum collet. And I want you guys to note this. This is made of aluminum. So we'll come back to this on and why that's important. So. At the top here, we've got the spoon and the cap, as well as the striker and the pin. So to set the Thunder Bees up, usually pull that out, lift up the spoon, pull back the hammer. You can insert the fire, the, uh, the, the, the pin into this top piece to give you a little bit more leverage. I'll stick it into this hole up here and stick that in there, pull it down, and that's gonna prep my hammer. And then I'll go ahead and stuff the pin in here. An extra precaution, it's not necessary, but it's good to do. Just bend back that pin. They do give you spare pins in case this breaks. So don't feel bad. I've used this pin, you know, at least a dozen times, if not more, um, no issues whatsoever. So now to reassembly taking my firing pin, placing it into the core, and making sure that I have the, uh, the larger threaded side towards the plastic, and just screw that in. So when you receive the Thunder Bee, it should look something like this with a little cover on the firing pin. And what you're gonna wanna do is ensure that everything is tight. This is really important because it's not necessarily tight and you want to always check this when you're prepping your Thunder Bees as well because I have seen it where the pressure has blown off this aluminum collar here and it renders the grenade useless. So keep that in mind guys, always watch this. Don't cross thread it, make sure it's on there secure, make sure it's safe um, and you should be good to go. So now taking the main cylinder here, attaching it to the rest of the grenade, we go. And make sure again, this whole assembly right here, make sure this is tight. Don't over torque it, but like a firm, think firm grip and twist. So from there, 
what we would do is we would put in the CO2. I'm not going to do this. I'm inside my home right now. Um, don't want to, you know, uh, make it make a loud noise. And what I'm going to do is screw in the end cap here. Now, a lot of people leave it like this. This is not the way that you should be prepping your Thunderbee cores. Um, I'll show you a little bit in a little bit here, but how, how I do it. One thing I want to make note, I do, I, I hate, I hate having to do this, but this happens guys. Mark your cores, mark your cylinders, mark everything. Make sure that, you know, you don't lose your, your, your pins, like all this stuff, put labels on it guys. People will try to steal this from time to time and always retrieve your thumb derbies as well. Like only use it if you're you're going to clear that room and you're gonna pick it up within the next like minute or two. Don't leave it out. All right, so with that being said, you know, with the marks, this gives me a witness mark here at the bottom. And so what I can do now is I turn it in all the way and then I back it off one turn and I just leave it like that. And this will hold, like don't worry about that. Yeah, I know it, it wobbles, but what that allows you to do is more gas is going to be able to exit the Thunder Bee, fill up this hard plastic shell, and reliably go off after, you know, about three to five seconds, roughly. Three to five seconds. So once we have that like this, we screw it all together. The last thing that I'll do here, um, it's really important, especially with the cylinder type. These cylinder types, they can take over 20 seconds to explode and they may not explode at all depending on your seal. So this is really important. What we wanna do is grab a knife and make some score marks on the seam. If you can kind of see the seam in the reflection here. Let me see if you guys can see that. Yeah, you might not be able to pick it up, but you can see a seam line from the casting and the blow mold and make light passes. I usually do four and then four on the other side as well. Don't go too crazy. You can puncture the, um, the cylinder and you can basically you know, cause a leak. And so that would be a weak point in the grenade. But at this point, you know, if there was CO2 in there and everything's tightened down, I have my score marks. I've loosened the internal cap by one full turn. Everything is tight. Again, just triple checking. You really got to make sure this stuff's tightened down. This grenade is ready to go. And this will reliably explode after three to five seconds, typically three but it, it really depends on like these marks and that's gonna be the, the biggest factor. Now, if you have a cylinder shell, my preferred shell is the, the dumbbell type, by the way. Um, it, it's got more seams on it, so it has more weak points and more weak points means it's gonna reliably explode every time. These cylinder shells, these are like, these are honestly bomb proof. So you do have to go a little bit deeper with the scoring and that's what will cause these ones to go off. They are a little bit louder as well because they allow more pressure to build up inside of them before they go off. Um, however, these ones with the score marks, you're looking probably more towards five seconds um, it'll take to explode. So yes, keep that in mind. I don't have experience with the other types of shells, so I can't tell you one way or another. The last thing I want to talk about here is retention. Retention for one of these things. Where can you stow this? Where won't you drop it? Because I will tell you, if you drop it in a really bad way, you can get the uh, CO2 to still strike the striker without this hammer. And you know, you're, you're in for a bad time. And we've done that before, but... So what we've done here um, is this is just a, this is a custom piece of Kydex right here and then it's riveted to a, a malice clip and then it's on the back side of my plate carrier so I can easily reach behind and grab it. But you can find commercial examples of these. I think um, MC Kydex does a version of this. So just keep on the lookout. 
or I'm, I'm, if you have a different option, but I really like this option because if you find one that's a similar design, you can rip straight out. It can be on your backside and that's good to go. I have never had a problem with this Kydex one. Um, and you know, if you get Kydex, you can heat it up and you can tighten the retention or loosen the retention. You can actually adjust it. So that's why I like these. And they're just, they're clean. They're clean, simple, easy to use. So that just clicks in. And again, it's cut out for the dumbbell type. Does work with the cylinders. So that does work. But um, again, I prefer the dumbbell type. And what I'll try to do as well is when I'm placing it on my plate carrier, make sure that the ring is facing the back. And what that's gonna allow, you know, just make sure there's no, no issues with that catching onto anything and uh, the spoon flipping on you. So, you know, that's A to Z on the Thunder B. What I wanna talk about now is spare parts. So extra things that you should keep around, obviously make sure you, you, you stow these with you. It's super easy to leave, lose these, uh, these pins. So just keep that in mind. Keep these with you in a safe place on your kit at all times. Um, I also had, I have a couple of broken cores. And so I wanna make a note of this to show you guys where the failure points are for the Thunder Bee. And what that's gonna really be is this pin here. So right here, this one is broken off. This one has fallen off. And I need to make a repair to this one, but this should be, this should be in working order. I just need to grab the spoon in here, stick it back on, and then bend this metal back into shape. We should be fine. Um, but it's good to have spares. These things do see some abuse. Um, this first core that I had before this broke, this lasted me a couple of years. So that was really great to see. But um, this one is more, you know, relatively new. I got a second one as well. And, um, you know, this one is, you know, it lasted me probably about a year now. So just keep that in mind. These things are consumables. They're fairly cheap, so it's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to, to share some knowledge. Um, seen a lot of people struggling with these and uh, wanted to demystify, hey, how do you get these things to work reliably? More reliably than one of these things, but we'll get into this on another video. Um, just wanted to show you guys. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys out there in the field.